Okay, let me read this. <clears throat> so these, are, these are some of my sources. It's not an exhaustive. This is the sign of how corporations control governments in the neoliberal globalist worldview. Uh, just to link there at the time. You know how lobbyists control government policies in the interests of corporations, profit making. War is a racket, the military industrial complex. Anyway. Uh, here are some YouTube sources and sources from Telegram, some websites. But this is an important point. I do not endorse all opinions expressed in these sources. They merely provide different points of view from the Western narrative. So I don't agree with everything that's said here. I may not even agree. I may agree with some, I may disagree with others, others, and I'm, I might be like a neutral, so I'm not saying I agree with everything. I'm just saying these provide uh, points of view which are different from the Western narrative, and I think they're useful to consider. Um, how neoliberalism acts with impunity. Due to a lack of accountability, here is a quote, liberals are like that, there is blood on their hands, but they never want to be held accountable for the blood. This is regarding the Fitzo, I think that's how you pronounce the name, assassination attempt, and there was a post about how one of the newspapers was covering the attempt. I thought this is a very valid point, you can say the same about how one gets about how no one gets held accountable for the war. The war is in Libya, Iraq, Syria. Iraq, Libya, Syria, Yugoslavia, no accountability. So they go on acting with impunity. Exactly. The Western hegemon, the hegemony, because of its military power, mainly the United States, uh, pushback is very difficult. <laughs> no one else. Yeah, it's very NATO, uh, with the intelligence agencies, they have um, the information narrative, they really got a very strong control of that. Uh, anyway. How Western elites like to demonize Russia, you think? The party poopers or sore losers will do everything in their power to stop a multipolar world order forming. We'll make it as difficult as possible here, future and ongoing attempts to attack Crimea. Good summary of what the Russians and Chinese are trying to achieve. Uh, Western hegemonic rules-based order versus multipolarity based on international law where state sovereignty is respected. So this is the unipolar hegemon versus the multipolar um, sovereign states. I allege videos like these are produced by NATO or the military industrial complex to push the Russian threat narrative and lobby politicians to send more money to buy weapons. So cynical. And these corrupt politicians buy into this? Oh. <laughs> this is my allegation, speculation, opinion, all right? This is one of those YouTube videos. So I'm not saying I have evidence to back it up, but this is just my sort of opinion analysis. It's my allegation. <laughs> it's my. I'm not saying this channel specifically is run by the military. I don't know who runs this channel. Uh, but I'm saying videos like this on YouTube saying, look at the Russians, uh, terrifying. They, uh, the Russians are uh, building more weapons. It's, it's, the, the music, the threat, the threat of the Russians. It's to sell weapons. 
it's not about making your country safe because they know the Russia is not going to attack NATO war with the U.S. But by drumming up the threat narrative, they can sell more weapons. Again, no consequences, so the show keeps going. This isn't this so cynical. And uh, why do they do this? When the Russians put their nukes on notice, they are not trying to sell weapons exactly. They are genuinely trying to stop NATO from foolishly starting World War Three. Given how corrupt NATO has become and how ignorant politicians are, they could be conned into starting what they consider a limited war. So the nukes were put on notice precisely to circumvent such a course of action. So, yeah, NATO believes in its own propaganda and its invincibility, and so they might, they, they're trying to start, they think they can defeat Russia on the battlefield in a conventional war. And the Russians are saying, that's why Russians are like, oh my god, these people are nuts. So, so Putin put the nukes, you know, the new, the drill to say, no, this is not going to happen. You use it will get it, Russia is not going to lose because they have the nukes, and if it if it gets to a point where uh, the state is threatened, the the nukes can be used. So that is the part of the Russian nuclear doctrine, and and then. And, NATO won't be able to defeat even unconventionally anyway. So bring with a nuclear war, mutually assured, assured destruction. I propose, I propose, this is my theory, my speculation. Again, this is my theory, speculation. I don't, I don't have evidence to back it up, okay? So I'm just saying it's just my theory, speculation, allegation. That recent movies like Oppenheimer and warnings about nuclear war in the media are cynical ploys by the cabal, which is the uh, the NATO Western hegemony, backed uh, by the you know the banks, military, industrial complex, Ugh, anyway, to create a taboo on the use of nuclear weapons. In the next NATO summit in July 2024, apparently this is a topic of discussion, which is the taboo of nuclear weapons. The foolish cabal thinks it can win a conventional war with Russia and wants to set the stage for non-use of nuclear weapons. This is why Putin put the nukes on standby. NATO is really stupid. It's swimming in its own propaganda, thinks it can defeat Russia in a conventional war. Do they not realize that Russia will use nukes if needed? This goal to impose a strategic de strategic defeat on Russia is foolish. Notice how Oppenheimer won the Oscars. I am telling you, the cabal controls Hollywood, or at least as much of it as is needed to promote its propaganda to further various geopolitical agendas. I think Americans and the world should realize how extensive the propaganda is. It's really a wake-up call to me. Uh, there's something else. I believe new liberalism is anti-human. It destroys people. It makes people miserable and unhappy. How do people heal from liberalism, from this anti-human virus? I don't know. Maybe you could start by acknowledging the problem, the anti-human nature of liberalism, and act with humility to repair your damaged life, psyche, soul, spirit. This may be a lifelong process, a journey. Hating people and life isn't the answer. I've noticed this. People who are, like, even this even happened to me as well. Like, the more I consume social media and all this liberal stuff, uh, <laughs> you can get very angry and anti life. NATO bought into its own propaganda. This is a post. I was a fool to believe in liberalism. It sounds good. Freedom, democracy, human rights, but in reality, it's a ploy used to divide and conquer to elites. Those terrible evil demons use it time and again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we live in.